lovely crinkly one, chubby, much as I like that. Probably about 15 types of book here. Make a junk journal. Ooh, lovely, look at that. Hello and welcome to my craft room. Today I'd like to invite you in to come along with me as I make a junk journal with a very specific purpose. So what I need to do today is make a junk journal for Junk Journal January, which is a regular challenge that I've been involved with before. And I thought I would just lay out some of the journals I've made over the last four years and explain a little bit about what I need to do in terms of making one that's perhaps a bit different from what I've done before. I also don't have a lot of time and I think that's probably a very realistic situation to be in. We don't all have all the time in the day to sit and make journals. So I need to make a junk journal that will allow me to fill it with all sorts of daily spreads. And that's what Junk Journal January is about. So that will be kicking off on the 1st of January and I will be participating over on Instagram. And I'm going to fill it with lots of lovely spreads like the pages I've just shown you here. But the challenge I've got, as well as not having a lot of time, is that this happens. So I get a massively fat, chubby, much as I like that, mouth here. Let me find another one. So this, I think, was another example. There we go, Junk Journal July. And although I love the chubbiness when it's done, I really want to have a junk journal that's a little bit flatter and a little bit easier to store, perhaps, when it's full. So obviously my older journals, maybe this one that you've seen before, this is a very old one. I didn't fill as much and it was okay to have just pages that would fold in because I wasn't putting so much gubbins on the pages, it wasn't getting as chubby. But I need to make one in short order today, perhaps with a couple of signatures and a bit of a spine, so something a bit different that will allow me to fill the pages beautifully and still use lots of lovely ephemera when I put those junk journal pages together. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently today from the usual more structured tutorials here on my channel. So it might feel just as a one-off a little bit different in this video. I'm going to show you some of the behind the scenes activities, the nooks and crannies in my craft room that I don't normally share. So I hope it will feel like you're here crafting with me, sitting along beside me as I put together a junk journal. I will share some process steps if you want a more thorough step-by-step -step process to follow. But with all of that said, I just hope you'll enjoy this video and maybe make a junk journal with me. So the first thing I want to do is choose a cover for my junk journal and I tend to do it that way round. And because I'm short of time, I have decided to pull out some that I made previously. So these are relatively large covers. They're just from a big book page. And I made them a while ago. In fact, I made quite a few and they've been sitting on my shelf. So I have the same process applied for making them. I will leave a link to the video making these in the video description box down below. They're really quick and simple because they're just made from large pieces of collage paper adhered to that large book page. So I've used children's book pages, I've used little bits of beautiful digital paper, images from books, I've got some smaller ephemera items, and I've got some vintage book pages. And they've all been just overlaid with each other. Then what I did was I sewed around it. So I've put a border around each of these with a strong thread, in fact, an intentionally visible dark thread. And I've also put some zigzag as pattern across the page, just to give some detail for the eye. And it also is helpful because it holds the collage paper down. I've then added a little bit more detail for the eye with some stamping and the ink for the stamp is the same colour as the thread. That might have been a coincidence. I have done it with a text stamp and a postmark stamp, but any stamps will do. 
and I've finally finished each of these off with a pretty butterfly which will act as a focal point on the front cover. And I feel that these are about the right size for Junk Journal January or Junk Journal July, whichever one I choose to do next. There's enough real estate for pretty images but not too much for it to be daunting. It's a daily challenge and there's quite a lot to do but I just really really love it and if you're interested I would really encourage you to join in. So this is the cover that I'll be using and I'm going to make a bit of a spine down the middle so give it a bit of capacity and add two signatures on the inside with fewer pieces of book page in each. I mostly use book pages for my signatures so they will have more space along the back so I've always just folded. I'm going to bind them in with a figure of eight just using string and that means really what I need to do now is go and find my book pages and pieces of paper to make two signatures and this is where I thought I would show you just a little bit more behind the scenes mess around my craft room. It isn't a beautiful craft room with really neat cubicles and everything tidy. It's my reality, it's my sanctuary and I absolutely love it. So to put together the pages in my junk journal I go to three locations in my craft room and here we are looking at what's underneath my desk and you can see a number of boxes that are, it might look messy, but to me there is some system to it. In fact, I did declare this system and talk you through it in a relatively recent video talking about organisation and how I organise my craft room and try and not feel quite so overwhelmed, which I'm, I'm thinking some of us sometimes do. So what I do is I go by feeling and I have a really good rummage and just think what do I fancy putting in as pages in my junk journal and if I'm feeling like I want it to be a bit more grungy I might pull on some of the, you can see the pages here, I've got pages like this which are book pages that have been dunked in an acrylic dip and then sprayed with a white paint. So I have a supply of those on tap and those are great if you want to just put that element of crunch into the pages of your junk journal. I probably don't use some of the scrapbook pages which are in each of those compartments behind and for a junk journal I might use one or two digitals. So again I have a video showing my system for organising these. I did put something together and I've managed to maintain it. So I do have some very pretty digitals there. I might incorporate one or two into a signature but broadly I like to use book pages. Over here I have a thing of beauty which is very fortunately some beautiful vintage music sheets and when I'm putting together a junk journal I really like to find ones with bold text as well as the music notes because I think that gives us contrast. I think that's really really great I'm, I'm kind of too hoardy to rip into some of the pages that are in the books there, but at some point I, I will use them and I will get to them. There's a bit more music paper in that tub over there. And then I also have, and it may look like a slidey mess because it is, I have a couple of baskets down here. And these are basically the repositories for work in progress for projects. So as I as I make a bit of a mess on my desk, I put the leftovers in here if they are large pieces. So I do end up with quite a few digitals here, but this is also a great place to reach and pull. If I fancy some, maybe a little bit of color, a bit of pattern. If they are book pages, I tend to try to put them in a box that's just above my desk. I might show you that in a minute too. But broadly, I would look here, probably pull out one or two music sheets, because I think that works incredibly well for journal pages and I'll do some folding. I'll show you how I do some folding to avoid having to trim any pages. But I'll also have a look at my cubby hole, which is right behind me. And I'll show you what I pull out of my cubby hole for specific pages for a journal. So this is a cubby hole. I have a 
a sort of set of cubby holes on the wall behind my craft desk. I'm just showing you one or two here. So I've got some with paper in, for example. You can see stacks of it here. But I have one that's designated for books that have been started, but they are pages that work extremely well in a junk journal. So in my mind, pretty much every one of my books, and I do have a lot, has a purpose and that purpose is always a little bit different from another. So to give you an idea, let me just pull some out. What have we got? We have got a, I know this one, this is a book about various herbs, You're getting to see the other cubicles there, let me show you, various herbs and that's absolutely fantastic because it's got green on it and I absolutely love green and I can fold it to whatever size I want. I also have in here, as you can see, sneaking in, in fact, a couple of copies of a Victorian flower album by Henry Terry. We know him. We love him. So that is a beautiful book. And I've, I've used that just for, even just for the covers of various junk journals. So I also have in here, and I don't have that many pages left, a Hans Christian Andersen children's book. They're really large pages, which is brilliant. And it's one of those books with lovely images that have been drawn. So pretty much every page has both large font and big images. So that works beautifully. It doesn't matter that it's really big. I can fold that down. I'm making a complete mess on the floor here. I've got, oh, I've got all sorts in here. Um, a really, really big, if I pull it out, it's going to be very long. I think that's my long one. Let's pull out one of my pages. So I have a coffee table book with pages like this. I've made envelopes from pages like this and that's crying out for pocket making. I've got, oh, I've got a history of art book and they're all different. I've got a really useful DIY type book with strong paper in it and a white background. I've got an art book here. You can just see the face of a pretty guy there and just so probably about 15 types of book here and I would pull on these so to get contrast of font texture tone size and I know what I've got it, I know it's jam-packed I love them all and I will incorporate pages from some of these in today's into today's junk journal this cubicle just sits below some of the books that you may have seen in my organization video Speaking of which, I will also pull from some of the books that are in a sort of orderly fashion on the floor. So I like to incorporate textbooks, dictionaries and some vintage book pages whenever I can. So the order of those books and the stacks that are put together is quite helpful, helpful for pulling out specific book pages and mixing those into the various areas and pages in amongst the other pages in the signature. So I've pulled out some pages, mostly book pages. I'll just show you what I've got in a second. I want to fold these and turn them into a junk journal a bit like this. So this is the original journal I put together with that same cover. And if you'd like a more thorough set of process steps for putting together a junk journal like this, then these are the ones that I have. These are the comprehensive set of steps for this style of junk journal, single signature with plenty of folds, which make it really, really easy and you don't need to do any trimming. And you can find these in Pinterest. I've even called out the basic supplies that you need. So rather than duplicating this, I'll refer you to Pinterest or you can take a screenshot now and they are dated April 2022, which is when that original video was posted. So what I need to do is make a cover with enough spine for two signatures so that it can be flat. Why don't we choose this one? And then that will tell me what size I need to fold these pages. So I'm going to measure this and give it for two signatures about a centimetre of spine, maybe a little bit less. So it's about 28 point, just over 28 and a half, 28.6 centimetres. 
So I'll just make a couple of marks so that I can fold and know how big these folded pages need to be. So this gap here is about 0.9 of a centimetre and I'm going to take my cover and gently fold it, ease it round to join the dots and give me a bit of a spine. And then I'll join the other two dots and just fold over here. Needs a bit of coaxing. So now I've got a little groove down the middle where I've folded, you can just about see. And that's what I'll use as the spine and I'll know where to put the holes to add a couple of signatures. So let's move on to folding the pages. I've got some pretty trees, I've got some characterful font, I've got some dyed, that's gently dyed, and a little bit of glittery mica on it. Shakespeare book page, dictionary, a bit more Shakespeare, some nice images. I may not use all of these. I'm going, that's a lovely one, isn't it? I'm going to put about seven sheets, so seven pages that will be folded in each of the two signatures. And I'm going to make maximum use of whatever real estate I've got in these. Lovely crinkly one. Including a, a beautiful digital layer and just fold in whatever way I want to. Not too much method, just have a bit of fun and make maximum use of the images as well. If I've got something as beautiful as this text here on a music sheet I will probably feature that at the front of one of the signatures and I've got a bit of whimsy by way of some little lovely colourful dots here on a piece of scrapbook paper. I think the easiest thing to do first is just split these into a couple of piles for the two signatures so that I've got oh lovely look at that the gorgeous text beautiful so that I've got not so much repetition within a sing single signature, but I might want music paper in both of them, which I will. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe that's colourful, a bit of colour in that one. So it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe a children's book page, an enormous turnip. How about that? So quick choices for the pages for each signature. I'll clear away the mess and then we'll do the folding. something like this I would just give it a bit of a hinge and then when I come to fill the journal I can add some extra on the side which will allow me to bind it in. Enormous turnip, I like the words, can I keep, I can't keep it all, I'll give that a bit of a fold and that will act as a pocket but I really like the text. So we'll keep that. Good. So I've got 
music paper, turnip, text, I think I'll just put something old in there for contrast. Maybe tear this down a bit and do something with it. Have a bold pattern. Yum. Particularly if something is modern, then I won't have too much of it, and I will probably not do a fold back because I don't want it to dominate the character of the pages. So I think for me that's enough, but I really like it. Look at the green there going with that. Yum, yum weave this in somewhere, maybe next to that nice vintage page. One, two, three, four, five, two more. So I have a beautiful large page from a gardening book. So I think I'm going to get a nice large pocket out of that. Nice and big, isn't it? So I'm going to fold where the text finishes, so that just keeps it looking nice. And because it's now too wide, I can also do a fold back. So folding is the answer if you don't want to have to do that cutting on the side and trimming everything down. I will in a minute glue where I've made a pocket. I'm just, oh, that's nice. That's really nice. I've got the botany feel next to the music paper and that just goes in there. Does that mean I've got enough? Maybe a crinkly page. What should we do with this? I think. Fold that down. So this was one I made by dunking quite a lot of liquid with acrylic paint, basic acrylic paint and water wash onto papers, all sorts of papers. Had a lot of fun dyeing them, just a bit different from using coffee. I like the tatty edge, so I'm going to keep that. And that can just sit between a couple of modern pages to break that up, it's all about contrast. And that's the kind of approach I have to making a signature. I think that's really pretty. Is it going to work? Are they going to stick out? Let's have a check. That works for me. So all I'll do is just take the other pile of papers and make my second signature and then I'll glue down the pocket sides and then we can sew them in. So I now have two folded signatures, each with seven pieces of paper in them. And this second one turned out really quite interesting. It's just the way it happened, so I just thought I would show you. I had that large book page and I wanted to preserve the majority of that image and rather than put it in the center of a signature I just folded up at the bottom I took a bit of a side piece off by folding that back and then I folded this over and that makes this width not too wide for my signature. So it's a fold up and then just take a little bit of the side down and fold over. And what I'm going to do is just use this hinge here to go into the signature and have this right at the front. And that way when you open up, you can see all of this, albeit I might decorate on it. But I just think that's more interesting than just using a page like this in the centre, as I did when I put this original one together, I think. So I managed to do a fold down just to preserve a picture. But this is an alternative. There seems to be no end to the number of ways that you can fold pages just to make best use of the pictures. So that's got my dyed paper in it, a modern page, a beautiful piece of, it's a digital, but it's got that great text on it, some yellow paper from that herb book, and this page has been inked on it, stamped, and then I, I think I did it with water just to make it all run, and right in the centre, 
I've got a smaller sheet there with some trees. So what I'm going to do is glue down any of these that are made into pockets. So like down here, and then it's very easy. I'm going to make holes in here and here and sew them in. So the pockets are all glued, what I'm going to do is use a couple of clips, make holes in these and in here and then find my string and glue it in. So to fit both signatures into our cover I have drawn some gentle lines in pencil where we made those original folds. So if you recall we made a fold so that there was about say about 0.7 to 0.9 of a centimetre width in this spine area and to make it more visible all I've just done is take a pencil and draw where we made those folds so I can see the groove where my spine is actually going to go and then what I've done is draw six dots for where I'm going to make a hole with my awl so I've got two dots right in the centre just on the inside of the pencil lines that I've drawn, I put two more dots six centimetres further down and two more dots are always on the, just on the inside of those lines that we drew just above and that's going to work for the size of signature I've got. Now check the size of your papers, there's a little bit of gap here so you don't want to have your holes above and beyond. So I've gone in the middle and then about six centimetres either side and that will mean that these signatures are held really firmly. So what I'll do is take my awl and make the holes and then we'll make the holes in the signatures themselves and sew them in. And this is really sharp and goes through very easily. So the collage isn't that thick on the outside of this book page so it's very easy to do. So having got the whole positions in the cover, what I do is I take my cover, I find the centre of my signature, make sure your pages are the way up you want them to be. Yep, that's what I want. And I take this, making sure that the signature is positioned where I want it to go. And then I can take those holes and make sure I can see them and make a mark on here and that way you get the position of this signature to be exactly where you want relative to the top and bottom of your cover. So I can see the hole there, I'll make a mark, I can see the hole there, I'll make a mark and I can see the hole there. So now I can make my holes in here knowing that those holes will line up exactly where I want them to go. one. You can see we've still got the spare holes for the second signature ready to go. So that's looking quite good. So I can sew that second one in. I wanted to take a moment at this time of year to also just say an enormous thank you. Thank you for being a subscriber if you are. If you haven't then 
maybe consider that too. And thank you for watching my videos and for being my friend. I really have enjoyed this last year and I've got some really exciting plans for 2023. If you'd like some more inspiration and you want to make a junk journal and fill your pages, then check out this video here and I hope to see you soon.